The Honourable Member for Battle River Crowfoot. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And as always, oh, it's an honour to be able to rise in this place and uh, talk about the issues that are so important to, to Canadians, and specifically today, rising to talk about C-347, an act to amend the Constitution Act um, uh, 1867, and specifically in relation to the oath of office that those of us in this place all take uh, prior to us being able to take our seats in this point. place. And, uh, and Madam Speaker, I. I I, I would, uh, uh, in my reflection, and I know this, this, uh, this bill it was meant to be up for debate uh, a, a number of weeks ago, and finally having this opportunity, I, I can't help but uh, think about uh, so much of the history, the legacy, and what that means to our democratic institutions. And I, in speaking to uh, the uh, privilege motion that was debated yesterday, talking about some of what the pr privileges of members of parliament are, I mentioned the mace, mentioned uh, um, uh, s some of the other symbols that we have in this place, I think across our country, and how so much of that lends towards the history that we have to the country that we are able to uh, call Canada today. And uh, when it comes to the specifics of this institution, the uh, more than 800 years, the green carpets here, about how there was the uh, a decision on the fields of running mead to decide uh, instead of fighting a war, there would be deliberation and debate. Uh, that would take place, that the Crown would willingly give authority to the people, and that being represented through the mace that sits on the table uh, that our clerks reside at, where it points towards the government side of the House of Commons as a, as a symbolic uh, uh, a message to this day that uh, speaks of that, that, uh, that, that, that history of democracy, that empowering ultimately of people. And I, I enter into debate with uh, uh, um, uh, that, that history in mind on Bill C-347, where we have um, uh, what is, may seem uh, small in terms of, of simply adding an option to uh, MPs to be able to, instead of swearing an oath or affirming allegiance to the Crown, whether that uh, those of us who were sworn in prior to the late Queen Elizabeth II, uh, 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 the two opportunities that I've had, of course, sw uh, swearing an oath of allegiance to the late Queen, or those who have been elected more recently and will be elected in the future, an opportunity to swear an oath to King Charles III. But what I would, uh, uh, what I'll attempt to do over the course of my speech, Madam Speaker, is highlight a number of what uh, uh, I find concerning aspects to this bill. And the first is that we have a private member's bill that has a very, very limited opportunity for debate in this place, and the provisions of which are, uh, not, uh, we are not given the ability to have some of the fulsome discussion and debate on an issue as important as uh, uh, changing the perspective around the Crown's role in Canada. And the reason why I say that, some would say, oh, well, this just gives another option. And, and practically, yes, that is what happens here. But uh, I, I would urge members of this place to consider that in simply giving members a, a, a third option, uh, that, that instead of swearing an oath or affirming allegiance to the Crown, they would be able to uh, say that they'll uphold the Constitution. And uh, why I, I suggest that members reflect carefully on the significance of that change is because it shows a very, very symbolic uh, 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 shift in the way that we approach our relationship with so much of our national history, and of which the monarchy and the British Crown uh, uh, has been such a significant part of that. And to do so in, I would suggest, in the form of a private member's bill, I have some concerns about. It is uh, taking constitutional matters, I would suggest, somewhat flippantly and uh, uh, without acknowledging some of the seriousness to which we should be able to approach these important things. And that's not to suggest, Madam Speaker, and I know there are debates. In fact, I've heard some debates by, by in fact, there's one political party in this House that is, is, is no, no fan of the monarchy. Um, and there are various opinions that are, are, are uh, as to the future, the, the, the future role of the monarchy in both this uh, House of Commons, but also in the other place in the Senate. But, Madam Speaker, what is, is, is I would suggest, uh, th those are important discussions that we can have as a country 
but to simply provide an out without actually engaging in those fulsome discussions, I would suggest is deeply problematic. And to one of the challenges that I have with this bill is that it is somewhat contradictory in nature because while it gives a third option, and I've mentioned what that third option would be, one of the challenges is, is that it's, it's, I would suggest, very typically liberal because what it does is it adds a third option which does a workaround to do the exact same thing that the first two options provide. So in swearing an oath, to the, uh, uh, to the Crown. 1905, there was a solemn affirmation and there was, uh, my understanding, significant debate around that at that time. But what this ch change would bring about would basically say you don't have to do either of those, but you swear to uphold the Constitution. But by doing that, you are basically saying indirectly that you are swearing an oath of allegiance to the monarchy. So, Madam Speaker, my suggestion would be when it comes to the context to the bill we have before us, let's have the honest conversation as a nation as to the future of that in the context of our national discourse as opposed to the very limited few hours of debate that it has in a PMB slot. And, uh, uh, and, and I would just note, Madam Speaker, one of the ironies that I do find when it comes to this bill is, and particularly the irony, that we have a Liberal Member of Parliament bringing this forward, and I understand he has a long history of, of some of his, his, his opposition to, uh, and I believe it dates back to uh, some, some controversy in relationship to uh, uh, becoming a lawyer. Um, so there's obviously some personal history there, and while I respect greatly one's personal history and advocacy, uh, even if I don't agree with it, one can respect people that they don't agree with. That's a news flash, I think, for many in this place. But, Madam Speaker, what I do find um, interesting that a Liberal would bring forward a bill that does bring, bring forward a, a, a mechanism that has a very U.S. style of politics uh, a type of response that has been uh, uh, integrated would be, if passed, integrated into something that has been very uniquely Westminster, very uniquely Canadian, that already acknowledges that in some cases, whether it's faith or whether it's ideology, that some people don't feel that they can swear an oath, so rather uh, simply affirm their allegiance to the Crown. So I understand that. But it is uh, that, 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 that irony, I would suggest, that it is bringing forward some of that uh, 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 American style because if one was to look at, at uh, the oath that, uh, that members of Congress, that the U.S. President uh, swears or uh, members of the U.S. military, it, it, it certainly there is a, a, a similarity that uh, uh, would be brought forward, although not accomplishing the same thing in terms of being a workaround that still swears a, a, a allegiance to the Crown because that's upheld through the constitutional values. And what is unique, and in the last moments that I have left, Madam Speaker, is as we undertake some of these significant discussions, it's okay to have disagreements, whether that's, and, and I'm proud to be a part of a party, that, uh, uh, will, that, that provides a tremendous amount of latitude to be able to discuss and, 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 and in many cases agree. I know that, that my conservative colleagues and I, the reason why we are conservatives is very, very clear and straightforward and that's, that's something that we talk about often. But that doesn't mean that one universally agrees on everything. And it's that ability to disagree that is so fundamental to who we are as Canadians and the need for discourse. In fact, in the last minute or so, I would simply say this. I met with an organization that, uh, that talked about uh, 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 media literacy earlier today. And one of the fundamental takeaways is it's okay to disagree in our society. It's okay to have dialogue and debate. And it's okay to have different opinions on matters. And simply because someone has a different opinion doesn't make that person necessarily a bad person. But I, f I fear that, that we've moved down that line, that we simply demonize those who we disagree with. And I would suggest, Madam Speaker, that that is fundamentally incorrect. So to conclude, I would simply say this. While there may be a debate to have around the role of whether it is 
particular to the oath of office that I certainly take very, very seriously, that responsibility to uphold those century, that, you know, more than century and a half of democratic tradition here in Canada. And prior to Canada becoming a country in 1867, the advent of responsible government with Robert Baldwin and Louis Louf, uh, Lefontaine and, and, and some of the significant uh, history there, Madam Speaker. But let's have those serious conversations and not uh, uh, adopt a bill that I would suggest is somewhat of a cop-out to having those serious conversations that we should be able to have in this place. Thank you, Madam Speaker.